Okay, folks, hold on tight. Beneath the cosmic debris of an ancient supernova explosion, the James Webb Telescope has just discovered something incredible. Signals that appear to travel faster than light, even though Einstein taught us that nothing can be faster than the speed of light. Stay tuned, because today we're traveling to the limits of physics, and I'll also tell you why some physicists think that faster than light speed could actually be real. A warm welcome, everyone. Nothing is faster than light. Really? Write your thoughts in the comments below. Is the speed of light really the upper limit, or is there something faster? I'm very curious to hear your theories. We'll clear that up today. But first, why not subscribe to the channel at Lightspeed so you never miss another video. Subscribing is free and it really helps me out a lot. If you've already subscribed, feel free to leave a thumbs up as well. That really boosts the YouTube algorithm and then more people will see the video. Maybe we'll hit 5,000 likes. That would make me really happy. So what exactly did the James Webb Space Telescope discover? It detected wave patterns spreading out around the supernova remnant Cassiopeia A. Measurements show that these waves race through the cosmos at a speed faster than the speed of light. Astronomers call such phenomena superluminal. So what is going on here? Has Einstein been disproved? Do the laws of nature suddenly no longer apply? Is up suddenly down? What we are observing here is a so-called light echo. To understand how this works, imagine the following. A supernova occurs. A gigantic star has reached the end of its fusion and releases an unimaginable amount of energy. This event causes a sphere of light to spread out, moving through space at the speed of light. Now imagine that behind the supernova, there is a dust cloud, basically a flat plane of cosmic dust. When the expanding sphere of light hits this dust, it reflects the light and we suddenly see a glowing ring. The exciting question now is, does this ring break the speed of light? This is where it gets really exciting mathematically, because the answer depends on the angle at which the ball of light hits the dust cloud. At the first contact, this angle is virtually zero, and the speed at which the ring spreads is theoretically infinite at that moment. You heard right, infinitely fast. So we see a ring that initially races outward faster than light and then slows down. And that is exactly what a light echo is. It's not that the dust is moving faster than light. And it's also not that the light itself is moving faster. What moves faster than light is merely the intersection point between the light sphere and the dust cloud. This is not a physical object, but a geometric phenomenon comparable to how a shadow can appear to move faster than light without violating any laws of nature. But it gets even better, because some physicists building on this actually consider real faster than light speeds to be possible. But first, let's go into a bit more detail about light echoes. The truly fascinating thing about them is that they essentially provide us with a tomographic map of space. Because the seemingly faster than light signals sweep so quickly across the surface of the dust cloud, astronomers can use them to reconstruct the spatial structure of these clouds, like a kind of cosmic CT scan. It's as if you were hit by a supernova while in the hospital. That would probably save the health insurance companies a lot of money if it could be done that way. And Cassiopeia A is not the only example of such superluminal observations in astrophysics. Very close to the center of our Milky Way, researchers have tracked X-ray echoes from outbursts of the supermassive black hole Sagittarius A. These echoes also appear to move faster than light across molecular clouds in the surrounding area. A team of researchers was able to use this to reconstruct the 3D distribution of these clouds and even map their internal structure. A scientific masterpiece. And then there is the galaxy Centaurus A. There, astronomers have observed a jet of matter being ejected from a supermassive black hole. And this jet appears to be moving at 2.7 times the speed of light. Here too, it's a kind of optical illusion that arises due to the geometry of observation. When an object moves almost directly toward us and approaches the speed of light, it can appear as if it is exceeding the speed of light. This is because the light emitted by the object at different times reaches us almost simultaneously, which leads to this astonishing illusion. So far, so good. Those were all examples of apparent faster than light motion. But now it gets really interesting because I want to talk with you about the question that probably brought most of you here. Could faster than light travel ever be real? So not just apparently, but in the sense of actually transmitting information faster than light. Physics actually has a few doors that are open, at least mathematically. One particularly fascinating example concerns quantum mechanics. 
The reason why quantum mechanics does not allow information to be transmitted faster than light depends entirely on the probabilistic interpretation of quantum physics. The following can be proven mathematically. If there were even the slightest deviation from these probabilistic predictions, it could be used to transmit information faster than light. Most physicists interpret this to mean that nature is fundamentally random in the quantum mechanical sense and that it is precisely this randomness that protects the speed of light limit. However, there is one exception. And that is physicist Anthony Valentini. He believes that the quantum randomness we observe is only an approximation and is not always correct. In one of his published studies, Valentini writes, If quantum mechanics is only an approximation of a deeper theory, there may be situations in which information can propagate faster than light. This is a completely unexplored but extremely exciting idea. Incidentally, superluminal velocity also appears in theories that attempt to explain dark matter. When you play around with these theories, you basically always end up with some form of superluminal propagation. Most physicists take this as a sign that something is wrong with these theories. Sometimes I wonder if maybe mathematics is trying to tell us something, and we should consider faster than light travel more seriously. But I can already hear some of you quietly saying, I don't understand a word. To summarize it very simply, some physicists are wondering whether faster than light speed, i.e. movement or information transmission, might be possible after all. In quantum physics, this seems to be forbidden, but some researchers, such as Anthony Valentini, believe that there could be a deeper theory in which this limit is not absolute. Perhaps a small crack in the door to true superluminal velocity. And then there is Einstein's general theory of relativity itself, which actually allows certain types of cheated superluminal velocity, wormholes for example. You don't actually travel faster than light through the wormhole, but you arrive at your destination faster than light that has not traveled through the wormhole, a cosmic shortcut so to speak. Warp drives exploit another peculiarity of general relativity. While you cannot move faster than light in space-time, space-time itself can move faster than light. Physicists believe this is what happened in the early universe, that space itself expanded faster than light. So, mathematically, it's definitely possible to make warp drives work, and in doing so, even if it's cheating, outsmart the speed of light. However, and this is a big however, we still don't know how we can actually create and maintain wormholes or warp metrics. This seems to require negative energy. Negative energy isn't what you feel when you've been scrolling through social media for too long, but a real physical concept but we have no idea how to generate enough of it. Okay, so what's the bottom line? The observations from the James Webb Telescope are absolutely real and super spectacular, but they don't violate the laws of physics. Light echoes such as those around Cassiopeia A are incredibly useful for astrophysics because they help us understand the three-dimensional structure of cosmic dust clouds. True superluminal velocity in the sense of information transmission remains science fiction for the time being, but physics leaves a few loopholes open. I will keep you updated on any further breakthroughs on this topic. So make sure to subscribe to the channel now so you don't miss out and don't forget to give a thumbs up so we can hit 5,000 likes. And now, onto a completely different, but at least equally fascinating topic. Speaking of extreme conditions and incredible phenomena, my next video is about a black fungus that grows in the Chernobyl reactor and literally feeds on radioactive radiation. An organism that draws a survival advantage from one of the greatest disasters in human history. Be sure to click on the video at the top right if you want to know how this works and see original footage of this black fungus. At the bottom right, you can access another exciting video about science and space. Otherwise, I would say see you in the next video. Take care, everyone.